Well, howdy doody. How's your booty? It's, <laughs> it's howdy doody time. It's howdy doody time. Actually, it's wrangle time. It's what it is. We gotta it's get our wrangle in time. <laughs> it's wrangle, wrangle. <laughs> Lord help us. We are half nuts today. Oh my goodness. Yeah. God is just so good. We've got the joy of the Lord. Joy yes. of the Lord. It is our strength. Right. Joy, 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 joy. Down in my heart. Where? Where? <laughs> Down in my heart. <laughs> got it. <laughs> oh my God. Do you remember those cassettes? Like, Back in the day, oh, yeah. before CDs existed, oh, yeah. it was all the little kids' like, oh, yeah. songs on cassette. Oh, yeah. oh my gosh, we used to sing them all yeah. the time. Mom and Daddy pop them in the radio for us, and we just yes. get down, man. Yeah, we would. I love Jesus better than ice cream, and ice cream's very good. Mm-hmm. Did you hear that one? <laughs> oh, yeah. I oh, my gosh. <laughs> Every single one of them. I loved it. <laughs> Well, you know, we progressed. We progressed on up to DC Talk. You know, we were like Jesus freaks oh, yeah. and all that. <laughs> Down with the DC Talk. Because <laughs> they went to Liberty. So, you know, we were like seeing them before they yeah. were anybody in like the Virginia right. area. We had them. Like, I remember oh, yeah. going and seeing them and I was like, who are these guys? They're cool. Then all of a sudden they exploded. I know. I love them. Toby Mac. You're like, what? oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm looking for a lover. girl who's virtuous because God <laughs> laid it on my heart to search for this. <laughs> that's the Proverbs 31. He yes. did that. I loved it. I was like, that's me. 14 years old. That's me. <laughs> I had no idea what I was going to go through. <laughs> He's like 25. Anyway. <laughs> I know. <laughs> oh my goodness. Crazy. God is good. And I love all of that stuff because music's not the way it was. You know, like I, mm. contemporary Christian music's fine. But if everybody's a worship singer now, everybody's a worshiper. They just oh, put worship God. on their album and they're all of a sudden a worship leader. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, just yeah. come on, you know, leave that alone. Just stick with what you know. Anyways, I digress. Listen, we're here to talk about wisdom. That's a very, very interesting topic. You know, um, it's like... Whoa, kind of heavy, but it's something that God wants us to have. And I think it's super important in our walk with Christ. So we're going to try our very best to tackle this topic. Um, I looked up what the like definition of wisdom is. And wisdom is the person who willingly submits to Jesus and they walk in the path towards blessing. So that is like, we are willing. Wisdom is the quality of having experience, experience, knowledge, and good judgment. So good judgment would be meaning that we're willing to submit to Jesus and walk with him. But I want to take you to some scripture because scripture backs everything up, right? You know, Amen. so there's a couple, there's two different verses I'm going to utilize um, about wisdom. And I'm going to, we're going to go to Matthew 7, 24. Jesus has been preaching, right? And he is preaching on all the things. Jesus has just, it's the Sermon on the Mount. Starts in chapter five. He gives you the beatitudes, you know, blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And he goes through all of that. Then he talks about being salt and light. And he talks about how he came to fulfill the law, talks about anger, divorce, I mean, retaliation. He talks about loving your enemies. Then he teaches you to pray, um, talks about fasting. He jumps in on, hey, don't be anxious. I mean, there's so much that he covers in this Sermon on the Mount, right? Then he gets to these last couple of things, judging others, asking, and it will be given to you, the golden rule, the tree and its fruit. And then he tells you this in verse 24, everyone then who hears these words of mine. So all the things that he said before, from the Beatitudes up to now, he's saying, hey, everything that you have heard, these words of mine, and does them will be like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. The rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and they beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them 
will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. So Jesus like sums it all up like, yo, if you want to be wise, everything that I just told you, you need to do. Yeah. And if you are want to act like a fool, then okay, don't do anything I told you to do. And everything around you will come crumbling down. And I did a little bit of research because I'm a nerd like that. And I just kind of wanted to understand like why he would use that analogy. And it was because of the topography of Israel, because it is hilly. And if you, it's got like little valleys and it goes down to the water. So Mm -hmm. if you build up on the rock, then when the storm floods come, because it's going to rush down, you're not going to be taken down. Your house is going to be secure. But if you are a lazy person and you don't want to have to climb up the mountain, (laughs) you're Mm -hmm. just going to build it down there in the sand Mm -hmm. and it's going to get washed away eventually. Because what happens is with the rains, eventually the sand that you built your home on, erodes and comes away so that made me kind of understand okay that's why jesus used that analogy because they would understand why people don't build down there at the bottom and they built their homes up on the rocks um because it's safe it's secure but jesus is our rock that's right he's our secure foundation so you know, with this, I don't know what, what thoughts you have coming out of this, Jamie, but there are storms that come in our lives. Yeah. I was just going to say, what is sinking sand? Right. So I was just, I was thinking about that as well. And I would say any destructive habit mm. in, or belief in our lives, you know, like pride, uh, our flesh, envy, mm-hmm. revenge, apathy, yeah. um, even disbelief in God yeah, is, is, are some uh, things that I think about shifting sand or sinking sand, yeah. you know, and uh, having that shaky foundation that'll eventually come crumbling down. Like you were just saying in the word uh, when, when we're facing storms, the storms mm-hmm. of life. Mm-hmm. And so when we really think about that, what, what exactly is that, you know, having the wrong foundation and it is all this. All yeah. those things I listed. Yep. And you're just not going to really be firm. You're you're going to be shaky. You're going to be fearful. You're going to have anxiety. You're probably going to go mm-hmm. on a bunch of drugs to, to yeah. help you <laughs> mentally. And or you're probably sleeping away. Mm-hmm. And, you know, a little slumber, a little sleep, you know, all that is destructive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All yeah. of it. And I was thinking about Psalms 1. Mm. And how it talks about how blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands Mm. in the way of sinners, nor sits Mm. in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. night. And that's what I was thinking about knowing, you know, leaning into our chief cornerstone, which is Jesus Mm. Christ. When we rest in him, you know, we can go through the storms of life, just like when uh, Jesus came when the storm came to the disciples on the water, my word, you know, it was storming. There was all this stuff going on. And, um, you know, just remembering that about Jesus, how he calmed the storm on the sea of Galilee Mm -hmm. and, you know, the disciples, you know, just freaking out. Right. Yeah. And they were his disciples. Like they already knew that he was the son of God, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, but he, all he said was peace be still. Mm -hmm. Boom. storm went away that's Praise right the lord yeah and that that's exactly what we can do is call upon the name of the lord in the storms in our life and and we're we're gonna have storms you know um i made a note of some things that you know can come against us as storms and troubles in our life and it can be things yeah. like sickness finances death the government relationships yes. work etc we're able to withstand all of those types of storms the yes. nonsense that takes place in this world oh there's a lot of nonsense because yeah. we just do what he tells us to do yes. we follow him we build our life upon him and the thing that really stands out to me is that as they would physically build a house on higher ground well 
Jesus' ways are higher. Yes. And he is, you know, he's the chief cornerstone is what the, the Bible says. And so that means that he is the one that holds it all together. So right. if we go to him, if we build our life on him and all the things that he says in his word, then we're going to be secure. We're not going to falter and go into sinking sand like you just talked about, you know? That's right. And it makes me think about Justin, you know, he's like a math wizard, yeah. you know, like yeah. super math delicious. <laughs> math delicious. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I'm serious. Like, so we were, I was talking to him about this this morning and I said, uh, and then I came up and I said, you know, Justin, it's like a math problem, right? Like mm -hmm. an algebraic equation. Mm -hmm. Like if you don't, have the foundation of the formula first and you which is christ yeah then you're going to build on something that is wrong the wrong answer mm -hmm. so it's just like algebraic equation mm -hmm. in the formula in the formula is jesus christ he's yeah. our he's our cornerstone and if we don't have that right then the whole problem's wrong. And I have been there. Yeah. I have been there. I know what yeah. it's like to not pass an algebra test. <laughs> oh my okay. God, I hated algebra. Well, and you're not gonna, you won't get the right answer, you know? Right. Because that, like you said, he's that key. Mm -hmm. He is the equation that makes everything work. Mm -hmm. And without him, it doesn't work. And, you know, so many times we think we know better. Okay, so we're like, I got this. I don't need God. I, Jesus, just hop in the back seat. I got this. Where's the shortcut? You know? Yes, <laughs> I the shortcut. Exactly. I want to get this over with real quick. So we turn around and we, instead of building our lives on Christ and on Him and on what He's told us to do, what do we do? We put our security in money. We put our security in status. We put our security in relationship. We put our security in our government, um, in our physical well being and how we look. But guess what? It all fades away. That's the right. only thing that remains standing when it's all said and done is God, because all those things are superficial. Yes. They're not going to be with you in eternity. They're fading you know, the, away. That's it. The Bible talks about these are the things that that moth and dust, you know, that they they corrupt it. But there are treasures that we have, eternal treasures that that they cannot corrupt. So it's like, that's what building it is. And so we have to obey by walking in righteousness That's right. for his name's sake. That's what he called us to. And when I look at like the storms that he talks about this, those storms with the, the, the two different individuals that built their houses, mm -hmm. to me, it's like God's all knowing judgment. Hmm. Yes. And there are times that it can come at you because he knows. Mm -hmm. And then the yes. thing is, is if you've built everything on him, that judgment ain't coming to your house. And we kind of talked a little bit earlier about how there's so many things that, you know, we um, are permissible by God, but they're not perfect. They're not his perfect will. Right. And so I, it kind of got me thinking about a couple of different things. So like, you know, I have had opportunities come before me over the years where it's very flattering. Yeah. And it's like, just for an example, a job opportunity. And it's like, oh, they want me to be the manager? Me? Yeah. And you're yes. flattered. Your flesh is so flattered, right? Yeah. Yeah. But wisdom says, pause. Wisdom says, ask God, is this what you want for my life? Is this a gift from you or is this a distraction from the things you really have for me, Lord? Right. Wisdom says, go to him. But the unwise person says, I'm going to feed the flesh today, baby. I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm getting a new job. I'm moving on up, you know? Yeah. And you step into that and then you're in it for six months. You're exhausted. They've worked you like a dog. You're wishing you had never taken it. You're missing out on your kids' sports games and, you know, dance recitals. And you're doing nothing but working for the man. And you're missing out on your relationship with God because you stepped outside of his perfect will. You didn't even ask him. You didn't use the wisdom that he gave you to ask him for his will in your life. Yeah. And you chose your own road. That's right. It's like, it's like, it's been, you know, not everything is beneficial. That's right. You know, so everything is permissible for you as a Christian. Like, 
you know, you don't have the law on you, but it's not beneficial. Like that wasn't beneficial to go that right where you're sacrificing. There's always a sacrifice being made if you choose that, Mm -hmm. you know, your family. Yeah. And, you know, our family should, well, God's first and then your family, take care of your family. Yeah. And then, you know, things go from there, like the foundation. And if you go opposite to that by going by our flesh. Yes. Like we were just talking about that shaky sand, our flesh and going by that, then you're going to see the detriment. And I don't mean you're not a Christian, Mm -hmm. but it's not beneficial for you. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, like recently my husband and I, um, we had planned an overnight, he had to go away for work and it's here in South Florida um, that he was going to Port St. Lucie, which is a beautiful area. And, but it's about four hours from our house. And he was like, you want to come with me? We'll stay overnight and, you know, I'll work and then we'll go have a nice dinner and maybe hang by the pool. And I was like, that would be wonderful. So um, we were supposed to leave last uh, Wednesday to head down there. He was traveling home from North Carolina. It was a day trip up and back. And don't you know that this poor man ends up in a whole disaster of nonsense with flights. Um, they delay one flight, the first flight. He was supposed to be home at 6.30 that evening. And um, they delay his first flight because of weather. Then they get him on the plane and they get out there and they are like, sorry, um, we've got some issues with the plane. So go back. So they get him back. Then they put them on a third plane. And then they turn around and they get ready to take off. And then all of a sudden the brakes are pumped and they turn around and they go back to the gate and they say, we're sorry, but we've lost the flight plan. And our pilot's been flying for 14 hours. Well, how convenient. Uh Uh-huh. And you're like, whoa. I mean, so wisdom there was that let's get the pilot that's been flying for 14 hours out of the seat and get someone that's refreshed Mm -hmm. and let's get a flight plan, you know, get that sorted and filed with the air traffic control like it's supposed to be. But they get off and there's no additional flights. That's it. They're done. And he calls me and he's like, I'm in line. I'm waiting. I'm second in line to speak to them and find out what they're going to do. I was like, okay, At this point it's 930 at night. You know, he ain't getting home. <laughs> the poor man has had a long day because he'd been up at four o'clock that morning to get there. So the next thing I know, he's calling me and he said, um, I'm on my way home. And I was like, what do you mean? He said, I've rented a car. And I was like, you rented a car. He was like, their options were terrible. They only had 60 rooms in a hotel mm-hmm. for 125 people. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and he said, and so there was no way to get there. It was nine miles from the airport and they weren't providing transportation. He said, it was just a mess. And he said, you know what? I'm not even going to wait for them to try and resolve this. I'm renting a car and coming home. So I was like, okay, it's about a five hour drive from uh, Charlotte where he was. So he drove home, got home at about three 30 that morning, exhausted. And then we're supposed to get up and drive another four hours the next day. But wisdom from my husband said, honey, here's the keys. You drive. I'm going to sleep. And I said, all righty then. (laughs) That was smart, John. That was smart. (laughs) So he let me drive, you know, down. I say, let me. He he needed, he needed a chauffeur, the poor man. But, um, you know, Miss Daisy, eh? (laughs) Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, we got down there safely, but if he hadn't been wise and said, you know what? I need rest. We could have had an accident. He, we could have, anything could have happened, you know? Yeah. And I was concerned about him driving after he'd been all, you know, up all that night. But um, God got him home. I prayed sure. over that, you know, and I knew that the Lord was bringing him home safely. But that was wisdom, you know, to say to me, hey, you've got the capability. Yeah. I'm going to put this in your hands because right now I'm not capable of doing this. Yeah. So... Where am I going with that? Sometimes we need to recognize that we need to put the keys in God's hands. That's wisdom. And we need to allow him to be in control of our lives. And we need to stop trying to control things and thinking we have all the answers because wisdom says, let it go and let God deal with it. There's too many situations in our lives that we hold on to, that we cling to, that we think we know better than the almighty creator of the universe. Mm -hmm. And if we would just open up our hands and release whatever we're holding on to, that's wisdom. And then he can actually move. But we hinder God because we think we know better. It's like we got to get out of the way. 
Yes. We got to get away, get out of the way of our own selves. Exactly. It's like beep, beep, move. So exactly. God can do what he needs to do. Yes. You know, I mean, yes. how many times I've been there, I've done it. Yeah. And so my husband could have been a control freak and been like, no, I'm driving. I know where I'm going, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. but instead he hands the keys over. Um, and so there's so many times we have to realize we cannot do it on our own. We need oh, others. Yeah. We need God and God places people in our lives as well. And so there's also wisdom in listening to other people. Mm -hmm. There's wisdom in seeking out other Christians, mature Christians that can speak into our life and getting oh, yeah. wise counsel. Oh yeah. And I believe that if we pray for those people, God will put them in our life. Yes. And I, I mean, I know that he's done that with me. He's put people in my life and I know he's done that with you, Jamie. And, and yes. so when I look at that wisdom is shutting my mouth long enough to learn from somebody else. Oh yes. Which yes. takes me over to Proverbs six, mm -hmm. verse six and seven, go to the ant. Oh, sluggard, consider her ways and be wise. Without having any chief officer or ruler, she prepares her bread in summer and gathers her food in harvest. Wisdom is looking at God's creation and seeing that he even instilled his wisdom because he's the creator. Yes. He instilled his wisdom even in the ant. The ant doesn't have somebody lording over it, telling it what to do. The creator of the universe has done that. That's right. And so we would be wise to even look at creation, to learn from it on how to behave, yeah. how to trust God. Yes. Yes. And I was, you know, I was telling you about this, about my chickens. Yes. Yes. I was telling you about my chickens and how I, I don't know, to just to keep, get our wranglers up to date. Um, I recently got some baby chicks and uh, these baby chicks were only about a week old. Mm -hmm. And um, cute as button. I got all kinds. And, you know, you got to keep them inside for a while. And then I have a cage and I take the cage out and put it in their chicken run, which is the area where my big chickens run. And what they do is they'll sit and observe the older chickens. Mm. So they'll sit and look at them. Now they're about three or uh, four weeks old now. And they'll sit and look at them and they'll see the chickens scratching and trying to find food and everything like that. And they're just looking around and just having a heyday. And I just keep them out there for a couple hours during the peak of the sun. And then I bring them back inside and all of a sudden, guess what they're doing, guys? They're scratching. <laughs> they're scratching. They are scratching all their little, uh, the ground underneath of them. They're just scratching just like the big chicks is, is, is experienced. They're learning yes. from the experienced ones and yes. the wise ones, if you will. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's neat. Like you're talking about animals. God just put it in them. Yes. You know, but they need to see. Mm -hmm. And once they see it, they got it. Like, yes, that's what I'm supposed to do. I got this. Yep. They observe each other and they learn from it. And that that's how it should be in the kingdom of God. We should be willing. Imitating. Yes. And, and emulating what we see in others that represents Jesus. I mean, one of the best places that I learned to pray is by getting next to someone else who knew how to pray. That's right. And I listened to how they prayed. And I said, Oh, Heavenly Father, instill that in me. I want to be able to pray that way. Yeah. And he said, so just be quiet and listen, listen to them. And right. those are the moments we have to learn that we don't have all the answers, but we yeah. serve the one who has all the answers. Yeah. And there That's are right. other people that are wiser than us mm -hmm. that have, that are a little more long in the tooth, as I call it, you know, yeah, they've been the around, like <laughs> yeah. they've been like around that. the block a couple of times. Yeah. They've been through the experiences we can learn from their experiences, from their walk with Christ. And we don't have to go through all the troubles and tribulations if we are willing to submit and learn. That's right. Be humble. Be humble. Being humble. Be That's learn. right. Submission and learning from others around us is part of God's plan. It is part of wisdom. You know, there's just so many aspects to our walk with Christ that reflect 
wisdom. And you know, I was looking at just the different elements that are inside this little, you know, what, four chat, four verses here about the house on the rock and on the sand. And I was like, you know, what is, what does the house represent? That house represents our lives Mm -hmm. and our building materials so that we build in the right place with the right materials, and then we will stand firm. But if you decide you're going to build your house out of cardboard, I'm not sure it's going to withhold very much. Mm -hmm. And that's what I mean by superficial things in this life that we place value on that do not matter for eternity. That's right. You can't take all that with you. Mm -hmm. But what you can take is what Christ is doing in your life Mm -hmm. and how that reflects to the ones that are left behind. And how they too can emulate Christ mm-hmm. from the wisdom that you've gained yeah. um, through this life. That's right. And that's the stuff that we leave behind. Mm-hmm. Nothing yep. else matters. I mean, wood is, that's all wood, hay, and stubble. Like, that's mm-hmm. the stuff can get burnt up in the fire. That's right. It's all going to fade away. And, it, and it's not going to last. But these things in God's word, the things that he builds in us, the patience, the grace, the the mercy that we gain from him, that we pour out to others, the, the pausing and not making rash decisions when somebody ticks us off. You know, we don't turn around and retaliate. We pause and we say, okay, God, I'm a little hurt by this. I'm a little angry about it. You know, I don't like the way that they, <laughs> they acted just then. Yeah. But you bring it to him and you say, now help me process this. What do you want me to do with it, Lord? Yeah. Do you want me to do anything with it? Yeah. Or do you want me just to let it go? Mm-hmm. How do you want me to respond to it rather than reacting? Because these are the things that Jesus had just talked about in chapters five and six. Yes. You know, he talks about how to treat people in Chapter 7, verse 12, whatever you wish that others would do to you, do also to them, for this is the law and the prophets. Yes. I mean, mm-hmm. right there. And they, they call it the golden rule. I mean, they say it in school. You do unto others as you'd have them do unto yeah. you. Yeah. But this is straight out of God's word. This is straight from the lips of Jesus that that's how we're supposed to behave. So when somebody acts ugly to us, do we yeah. retaliate? Right. And and how do yeah how do we respond and and I think it's important that like you said is is um, being able to be honest about it mm-hmm. and having somebody like for you for example I've had a situation recently uh, last week where I was a little hurt by something mm-hmm. and I was like man that hurt, you know, and I was honest. It was hurt. I was angry. It was like all these emotions. And I think God gives us this emotions. Hey, you know what? There's nothing wrong with the emotions. He gave them to you. God gave those emotions for you. They're created in his image. Yes. And I think it's a a barometer for us to help us know where we are, Mm -hmm. you know? And so I think it's important that we realize that it's not bad to have emotions. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but it's good to have a good Christian friend that has had experience, you know, like I could give Chan a call and say, "Hey, Chan, um, girl, I, I have a situation where this person just totally just ignoring me and rejecting me, mm-hmm. making me hurt, and, yeah. and I'm actually so angry right now." Mm-hmm. And and then the Chan will make me laugh, and I'm like, you know what? That's that was great. That was great because you know what? That is a reminder mm-hmm. that you know what these fiery darts coming our way. Yeah, it hurts. It yeah. hurts. Come it on. Does. Let's be real. It's something as silly as it could be anything. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be a silly thing, but then these fiery darts still hurt. And it's nice to know that your Christian brother or sister that that has had experience with this stuff to say, dude, you're better than that. Yeah. Yeah. You're better. You better. Mm-hmm. You better, girl. And so don't take it on. That's right. And then you can take it to the Lord and just be honest and real and say, Lord, you know, it, it still hurts, but but God, I know that you're faithful and that you're going to make things right because you always make things right, Lord, because you're my secure foundation, yes. Lord. And I know that your will will be done yes. and that I'm secure in you and that you're going to work all things out for my good because I am your child. Yeah. yeah. And 
So I think that that's important when you go through stuff to have somebody that you can talk mm-hmm. to and, and to be able to, to rub elbows with, to help you to, to iron sharpens iron. And, yeah. and then the Lord will guide you in all, all that you do. So absolutely just having that firm foundation does help. It does because it causes us to stop and not just run ahead with wild emotions. Mm -hmm. We're allowed to express ourselves. Like you just said, we're allowed to feel the way that we feel because God gave us those emotions. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's what do I do with them that matters? How do I proceed? Am I going to proceed in the way that Jesus has told me to in all of this? Or am I going to proceed as the world would have me proceed? You know, and what does the world do? The world shames, the world criticizes, the world attacks. I mean, that's what we see on social media all the time. Oh. And it doesn't matter. It, Christians attack. Like they do. Christians right now, I believe we are supposed to stand up for righteousness 100%. Uh, And anybody that knows me knows that about me and knows I'm not quiet about these things. Mm -hmm. But I'm reaching a place with social media transparency right now is that I'm tired of seeing Christians attacking Mm non-Christians. I'm tired of seeing Christians go after the left on a regular because Mm -hmm. we're no better than them at this stage. Mm -hmm. What are we what are we doing? Yeah, there is a, a way to stand for righteousness without being just like the other people, yeah. being just like the world. And so that is something that I'm kind of struggling with where it's like, what are we doing as the body of Christ, as labeled Christians? What are we doing? Wisdom says we should be giving to the needy and we should be fasting and we should be laying up our treasures in heaven and not consuming so much here. And we shouldn't be anxious and we shouldn't judge others. And we should ask the Lord for help and things and he'll bless us. You know, we should be loving our enemies and praying for those that persecute us, not attacking them on social media. That's what the word of God says. So if you call yourself a Christian, then you best be believing. You better be following the word of God and what it says. And if you don't like what the word of God says, well, take it up with him. Mm-hmm. That's what it says. It does. So wisdom says you're going to follow these things and you're going to build your house on the rock of Jesus Christ, or you're going to build it on sand and wash it all wash away. Cause that's what a lot of seeing a lot of Christians do these days. Yeah. Just being real. Yeah, it's true. And, and I, and I want to go with you on that about the benefits of standing firm on that, mm-hmm. you know, and knowing that you can have peace yes, and you can have contentment, which is Philippians four, seven. Mm-hmm. And then you can have the assurance, which yep. is first John five, 11 through 13. God will be with us every step of the way and never mm. leave or forsake us. Mm. You will get number three, you get strength to keep going. Isaiah 40, 31, you'll get confidence. He holds the future. Mm. He hold, there's a song. I love this song. He holds the future and life is worth the living just because he lives. That song right there. That's Corinthians, first Corinthians 15, 58. That's the Gators. Yeah. If anybody wants to know, that would be I, know, the that's, I, I love that. I love that. And then you got hope for the future, which is Jeremiah 29, 11. Yes. And then you got Hebrews 10, 23. And then, um, we got the joy. We got the joy, 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 joy down in our heart. Where? Down <laughs> in my heart. That's right. Even when life doesn't go as planned. And I know we've all gone through that. I don't know yeah. if you've had a death in your family. And that's the hardest. I have to tell you, that's the hardest thing to go through. How do you have joy? How can you say it is well with my soul? Let me tell you, girl. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you, Wranglers. I sang at my mother's funeral. Mm. it is well with my soul. You know, the first thing my mom said to me before she passed away, she said, you're not going to cry darn singing that song, are you? And I said, mama, I sure just hope that I'll have the grace of God to get through it, but I'll yeah. do it for you, mama. Yeah. And you know what? I didn't cry one little tear, guys, mm. one little tear, but that that's because I had the joy in my heart. Mm-hmm. And that only comes with having the victory in him. Yeah. You know, having and knowing that he's going to, he already has everything planned out already for us. Yeah. That even when life doesn't go as planned, God is with me. He's yes. with you. 
And of course, there's victory, victorious. Mm-hmm. You're you're victorious over every circumstance. And that's 1 Corinthians 15, 57. We can mm-hmm. trust him. We can get through this, guys. Exactly. We can. We can get through anything with him. And, you know, you said that, that how do people go through things? You know, I just came back from Mississippi a couple of weeks ago. Um, and I met with a couple of different people and, and have some interviews that, that were taken down. And the one theme that I kept hearing over and over again was it was God. It was God that protected my family. And this one woman that I talked to just off the cuff, I said, can I just, you know, do you mind sharing your story? Can I video you? And she said, absolutely. And she just shared about things that had happened in her life personally previously when she first got married and she lost her husband within like a year of them getting married. And then this whole thing happens and she loses like her farm. I mean, when I'm talking, it was destroyed. Um, There are pictures of it that I'm going to be posting um, out on our social media, but it was just devastating. And I will be sharing her whole testimony as well. But Mary is her name. And Mary just said, I don't know how anybody does it without God. I do not know how they withstand the storms of life without God. Mm -hmm. She said, because I could not have gone through the things that I've been through in my past or what I'm going through right now without him. He is the only reason I am able to stand. I have lost everything. I have, they had just knocked her home down because it was condemned after the storm. Mm -hmm. Literally that day, it had been like less than 24 hours when I talked to her. And here she is standing, professing that it's only because of Jesus that she's able to stand. And she just presented the gospel like that. And she was like, you need to know him because that's how you'll get through life. And I'm like, come on, Mary. Presbyterian woman. She just got it. And it was like so refreshing because that's something I've said in my life. Mm. I wouldn't have gotten through X, Y, and Z without Jesus. Yeah, I wouldn't still be standing if it wasn't for him. You mm-hmm. say the same thing. Mm-hmm. And then I meet this woman, don't know from Adam, and she says the same thing. So yeah. what are we trying to communicate to you guys today? What we're saying is that the firm foundation of Jesus Christ will keep you standing when the storms of life come. That's right. If you will just put your full trust in him, you will put all of your hope in him. You will surrender to him and his will and his ways. You're going to keep on standing. The storms are going to come. See, that's the thing in this. It doesn't say that the storm isn't coming. It says the rain fell, the floods came, the wind blew and it beat on the house, but it did not fall. That's right. You will not fall if you build your life on Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. I don't know what else to tell you other than that. So what is wisdom? Wisdom is building your life on Jesus. Yeah. And not on the ways of this world. Mm -hmm. Wisdom is getting your nose inside the word of God regularly. And I'm not talking once a week when you go to church. I'm talking get in and read it Mm -hmm. daily. Right now in my house, we're consuming the word on a regular basis, like two and three times a day. And it's together. And it is, you talked about the chicks learning. Yeah. I sit and I read my Bible out in front of my son. Mm-hmm. And the the fire that is kindled inside him, he comes and he says last week to John and I, can we read Revelation together? So we start reading Revelation as a family. And then, you know, John got stuck out there. So he said, well, since dad's not here, can we read Matthew together, mom? And then when dad's home, we'll get back into Revelation. I said, that's fine. Let's do it. Mm -hmm. So every night while my husband's gone, he and I are sitting and we're reading Matthew together Mm -hmm. because he sees the pattern. He's learning from that. That's wisdom on his behalf. Mm -hmm. Wisdom says you're teachable too. Yeah. Wisdom says that you're willing to learn. And so anyways, he takes his Bible last night, we read, and then he goes and he sets it on the counter. And he said, I'm going to leave this here so that I read the word in the morning and I don't get caught up in my phone. That's wisdom. Yeah. To put it in a place where it's right in front of you and you don't get distracted by these, trying to hold my, these things. Because yeah. they are distractions of the enemy. Mm-hmm. 
So anyways, that's why I use a hard Bible. Yeah, me too. Because I'll get distracted by using the electronic Bible. It's mm -hmm. great for, you know, devotions and things to give you a, a guide, a plan. But what I'm going to tell you is that they distract, distract. So, you know, put it on do not disturb, baby. That's what I'm That's talking right. about. I do that all the time. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> You'll know I'm studying. Yes. Yeah. I'm studying when I have my phone on do not disturb. Me too. I'm either because reading my Bible or working out. So that's I'm right. Either working my spiritual muscles or my physical muscles. That's right. And they go <laughs> together, by the way. And we, you know what? That's our anniversary, by the way. It was the mind, body, and soul. Yeah. This was the same time. And I was re listening to that when I was exercising. It's like, you know, those were all very valid points. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> She gave that man to herself. I like it. And I'm telling you, they were, when even you, you made some very valid points about diet. I was like, that's right. Oh, thank you. Oh, I, you I had good. something valid to say. It was perfect. <laughs> well, listen, guys, you know, exercise wisdom. Yes. We want to encourage you. If you're not completely sold out for Jesus, get sold out. Mm -hmm. Life's going to be a little bit sweeter when you've got him in the middle of it. That's all I know. That's right. It's the truth. And, and anything, everything is uh, beneficial. I mean, every, not everything is beneficial, mm -hmm. but, you know, everything's permissible for you as a Christian. But like we were talking about, it's not beneficial for you. So mm -hmm. wisdom is so important mm -hmm. in life or you're going to stumble mm -hmm. and you're not going to be you're going to be miserable. Yeah. And you would ra I'd much rather have the joy of the Lord mm. get me through this life than to be sitting here uh being miserable. I don't want to be miserable. Absolutely. I want to be have yeah. the full joy of the Lord be filled up. Uh -huh. Fill my cup, Lord. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. Fill my cup. Fill me up. And that is, you know, um we also have to, I'll say this and then we're going to wrap it up and, and shut it down here, but we have to exercise wisdom in where we serve and pour our ministry as well. So for those of you that are in ministry out there, um, just because an opportunity arises does not mean that God's called you to it. You need to really pray into that. And I have had to do that recently because there've been a lot of opportunities for different things yeah. that I could take on but just because I can do them. Does it mean I'm called to do them? And that's like yeah. in your church. And it might not, and it might not be the timing. The timing that's might right. not be right. That's either. right. Is the Even timing though God might put it in your spirit, he might put it in your spirit, right? Mm -hmm. But the timing yes. is not right. His you timing know, is so always perfect. Kids, you, yeah. Yeah. And you still have kids you got to raise. So you yeah. Yeah. There's the things right that time. you can't pursue because there's a season for those things. And, and know, that, that goes back to Proverbs to or sorry, to Ecclesiastes, you know, if to everything, there is a season. And so wisdom says that when opportunities come our way, when serving opportunities in your body, whether it be VBS or singing in the choir or, you know, being a part of the co uh, crock pot crew for a potluck, whatever it is. <laughs> crock pot crew. <laughs> you like that one? It's a new one. I just made that That's up. perfect. Actually, that's probably going to be the easiest group to be a part of because crock pots, you just throw it in maybe. They're you part throw of it this, in. It's the CPC <laughs> crew. Yeah. CPC. <laughs> it is. That's the easiest crew to be a part of. Yeah. Um, but, you know, whatever it is that we get asked to do, because when we love the Lord, sometimes we get asked to do a lot. Yeah. And, and people see in you a gift. Yeah. And yeah. they're like, oh, uh -huh. we need to throw you into this. That's you need right. to do this. That's you got right. to do this, this, and this. And you're like, uh, thank you. Thank you for seeing that in me. It's there, but it's just not the season for me to do it. You know or what I mean? it's not my calling and it's right. not my gifting. Yes, I can do it, but it yeah. doesn't mean like, can I teach Sunday school? Yeah, I can teach Sunday school. I've taught Sunday school for years. Mm -hmm. Is that my gifting and calling? No, it's not. Just because I can do it doesn't mean I need to do it. You know, um, and, and those are the things we have to remember. Wisdom says just because you can doesn't mean you should. Mm -hmm. And that's in, in the serving capacity as well. I really want to allow you guys to exercise wisdom and exercise the word no or not right now. It's okay to say that because that is wisdom as well. So anyways, Freedom Wranglers, build your life on the foundation of Jesus Christ, that rock, right. wisdom. Yeah. 
Yep. On Christ the solid rock we stand. That's it. Amen. Well, we love you guys. Wrangle it in. Wrangle in the wisdom this week, guys. Wrangle it in, guys. We love you.